almost the happiest, just exuberantly happy as the number one last flame. Tell me how you and Don met. Don uh, had uh, gone through a divorce in Tennessee, got a job in Dallas, came to Dallas with two sons, a blue pickup truck and stuff to start working here with his two boys and worked for uh, a company where he would collect money from physicians. And uh, he was a salesman, he was a great salesman, he'd fly around the United States, but then when the boys had to go to school, he uh, had to stop traveling and uh, then went into real estate, did very well in real estate and uh, was a great father and a great husband and a great uh, real estate agent. So how did you meet? We met in Sunday school at Prestonwood Baptist Church and uh, he was funny. He was uh, needing a little stability to his life and uh, I had been through a divorce and I needed a little laughter in my life and so the two met each other's needs. So you seem so relaxed, reserved, chill. Mr. Nobler was anything but. We were total opposites, 100 percent. And I would say that he was like uh, a balloon up in the air that had to have that string tied and always wanted to be sure I had hold of the other end of the string because there was just so much of something inside that body that just kept him floating high. He was a great person, but he had lots of energy. And it was more than he could control at times. And uh, he loved attention. All of that was so opposite of me, Dia. I was a physician. I was quiet, I was one-on-one. -on -one. It was always nice to have him walk into a crowd and break the ice and I could just follow in afterwards. I needed nobody's attention but his. And so we worked well together. How does he become a Mavs fan? He met uh, Don Carter riding motorcycles. Don's motorcycle gang began having breakfast with Don. Don gave tickets out to the Mavs because Don had a suite. And uh, we became friends with Hard Ardinger and uh, just began going with Carter to the games. And then needless to say, Don met everybody. Don would go down at the halftime and talk to Danny Bollinger. He would talk to the players <laughs> if he could get in touch with them. He talked to the um, guys who were uh, passing out things. They just became friends with everybody, Mavs man and just loved it and every because he was different he was not like anybody anybody knew his clothes were different his personality was different and he wasn't afraid to be a different person he loved being different people began wanting to talk to him once they found out he was very personable he was he was not too good to talk to anybody he loved everybody he had no racial, no sexual inhibitions in any way. He was everybody's friend. And then um, the more he became noted, the more he was empowered to continue being Don. So we began looking for ways to let Don stand out. And we'd go shopping for things that would go with the vests and the jackets he would order. And he had more fun in life just being a part. He felt like he was a part of the Mavericks team. <laughs> now, I don't Damaris. think the Cubans thought that he was part of their team, but Don thought he was. Damaris, we got to talk about these outfits, right? Because we, it's hard to miss Don in any photo. We worked on that. We didn't want you to miss Don. <laughs> but these were designer outfits. They were designed. We started with them. Um, he met uh, Jimmy Goldstein from uh, Los Angeles and he wore Cavalli. So we tried a few Cavalli, but he was more Versace. So we went and we picked out Versace outfits. And then we went to El Paso and we had boots made to go with the Versace. Then uh, Danny and Joseph made hats to go with them. And then we found the pink clappers. And oh, he loved his pink clappers. So he bought a thousand of them and he'd pass them out to everybody. So everybody would enjoy his pink clappers. 
<laughs> he just loved to strut. I think he was uh, like uh, Saturday Night Live. And it, when he walked into the Mavericks Arena, it was showtime. And he would just, he thought he was cute. And I thought he was cute. <laughs> That's all we needed. We didn't have to have anybody's approval. Any favorite moments for you, for him? Favorite players, favorite games that stand oh, out? Oh, my goodness. Dirk is always a favorite. Shaquille O'Neal was always kind to my husband. He had always talked to Don. That just was everything to Don. Oh, yeah, we loved him. What did it mean to him to be able to be out there on the court at Mavs games every year? I think that it made him feel real special. Does somebody recognize I'm special? I'm very different, but I'm special. And they accepted Don being different. And not everybody loved Don's clothes, but enough people did that uh, he was happy. And as a wife, that's what it's all about. Seeing my husband happy and joyful and that big smile that comes through with every picture that Don has was just joyful for me. You never see a picture of Don Nobler without a smile. He was happy in front of a camera. <laughs> Danny Bollinger was a dear friend to Don and the two of them were just as nuts as can be. And Danny loved to photograph and Don loved to be photographed. It was a team effort and uh, it was a joyful experience for Don and I can never thank him enough. So they win the championship in 2011. Tell me what he's doing. Well, we were on a cruise, but we got it on the television, on the ship. And he was so excited. He couldn't wait to come back. And he wanted to be there and rejoice with them every day. And he bought the ring. He bought himself a ring. And uh, as you can tell, the whole office is nothing but Mavericks. For people who may say it's only basketball, Oh, it was not basketball to Don. It was like an extension of his life. No, we, we lived and, and ate, and we would never have missed a game. Don would never have missed a game. They couldn't do as well if Don wasn't there because he was the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> he felt he was a part of the Mavericks. How do you think uh, Don would react to the team heading to the finals. Oh, he's so excited. Don is in heaven. I'm sure he's looking down and he's rejoicing for them. He loved it. When they did well, he did well. So he would say, go get them. Go beat the Celtics and win all four games. Come home and bring that pennant back. Would you mind sharing how did Don pass? My husband had a bad heart defect called a myocardiopathy, it's a fatal lesion. We knew for five years that he was going to die with it. He was on an experimental drug. He had to have a pacemaker put in. He eventually had to wear a catheter. He had to sleep with CPAP, and he had a cardioversion done on Friday, and that night he died in his sleep. And I asked Danny to um, uh, bring the pictures that he made and so all of his maverick pictures were shown at Don's memorial service Bef As people walked in they saw Don displayed as a uh, number one mass fan Why does that mean so much to you? That's when he was the happiest Don was the happiest Just exuberantly happy as the number one mass fan Sorry, <laughs> don't apologize. It's still a little raw. I understand. I understand. What kind of legacy do you hope Don and his joy and his fandom have brought to the team? I hope they remember how much fun it is to be a part of a team. Take it away. It is so much fun to be a part of a team. Whether they won or lost, Don was behind the men. The guys who were out there fighting just as hard when they won and just as hard when they lost. Don loved the players. He loved the coaches, regardless of how they won. And so he would be exuberant knowing that they're, again, champions, because they were always champions with him, whether he won or lost. What is it going to be like 
I mean, seeing a Mavs home game in the NBA Finals and your husband's not on the, on the It'll court. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. I'm fine. Don had a wonderful time with the Mavs, and they were good to my husband, and I have nothing but thankfulness to them. What would it mean if they win it? I'll be happy for them. I'll be very happy for them. And I'll add something to my collection of photos. You have a ton of Don's memorabilia and his photos. Yes, Don loved his memorabilia so much that he built an armory out in Sherman. And uh, it's a whole big room. It's his red room. Needless to say, Don loved red as well as blue. And he has all pictures and some shoes of Shaquille's out there autographed. He has basketballs. He has all the great players when Nash was here and everything. They're all out there and signed. And uh, my son is out there now, Will Nobler, and he's uh, always on looking at all the times that Don went and shared events with the Mavs players. Who was Don's favorite player on the current team? Well, I, who was the favorite? Probably the, the star, you know. Okay. Lucas was probably his favorite because Lucas is so phenomenal. Oh. Is there anything else that you think is really important about Don that you don't want me to miss? Don was always for everybody. It didn't matter if you were Mr. Carter. It didn't matter if you were um, Linda and uh, Mark or Mark Cuban. He didn't just cater to the people that had a lot of money and were powerful. Don would be just as nice to the kid that was uh, crippled, to the youngster that tickets were given to. He always gave our tickets to the men in our greens that came representing the armed forces. You know, he loved the armed forces. He just would want the ladies in the elevator. He would say, your hair looks awful nice tonight, young lady. And you know, he was always wanting to compliment just anybody, make, make everybody feel good. I would like them to remember that smile was genuine. He loved it before the camera, but he was always happy to see everybody. He loved people. How much do you miss him? Oh, my gosh. A lot. Takes a while. But I have my granddaughter and I have my son, so I'm okay. I have the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart, and he's going to carry me on. And you know he had a lot of joy when he was here. I had a lot of joy. My life was full with him. I worked as hard as I could to keep him alive. Yeah. Maybe he still lives. He doesn't hurt. 